Well, hello, this is an overview of Forensic Analytics Second Edition. Uh, the book took uh, most of 2019 to write, and it took about another year's worth of work uh, in the six years before 2019 for the new material. Uh, compared to the first edition, we have about one third completely new material, more than a third. More than a third has been completely rewritten and a little over one third survived. Well, those fractions add up to more than one, and that is indeed because the uh, word count is up by about 10% over the um, first edition. Well, we're going to run through the chapters reasonably quickly. We're going to talk about the YouTube video, the PowerPoint slides, the end of chapter materials, the instructor's manual, and my Facebook page. So, Let's go. Chapter one. This is the introduction. This is, uh, oh, this is actually chapter zero. This is an uh, introduction, um, and we talk about Tableau as well. And I have a, a three interesting cases that I introduce in this chapter. It's just uh, something to warm up and get started. Chapter one is all about using Microsoft Excel. And what I did was I chose the features of Excel that would be most useful for what we're doing. And there's a section there on dashboards as well. We then start with the high level overview tests. And these tests are basically there to see whether our data is complete or whether we have some serious major issues with our data. I also introduced the purchasing card example in this chapter. And this flows through for about 10 more chapters and the same data and different tests. We then talk about Benford's Law. And Benford's Law gives us the expected patterns of the digits and lists of numbers. And uh, this has turned out to be a useful test. This chapter talks about the early literature, some of the theory behind Benford's Law, and some examples. You can see that we're demonstrating things using Excel and Access. Uh, lots of screenshots, lots of software demonstrations. You're in good hands. These are the advanced tests, and we're talking about how do we measure whether a set of data actually conforms to Benford's Law or whether it doesn't. I also talk about exactly how we can use Benford's Law on accounting data, and you can see journal entries and subsidiary ledger balances here. Uh, some interesting cases throughout. The Benford's Law test usually finishes off with the number duplication test and the last two digits tests. Uh, these are tests that complement what we've already done. And again, you can see we talk about how to run it in Excel access. And in this case, R is introduced. We now have two chapters dealing with outliers. Outliers are things that are odd and uh, we have a case here as well, and I think uh, the cases are nice and the, um, the tests are easy to understand, at least in this chapter. And this summation test is a continuation of Benford's Law. Again, we're talking about outliers, and what we've done now is we have broken our data into subsets, and we are looking for abnormal subset. Those subset could be an employee, an employee's purchasing card purchases, a vendor, um, something of that nature. Groups of transactions. We now talk about abnormal duplications, and it's hard to believe, but it's true. Uh, sometimes uh, corporations will pay a vendor twice. That second payment is part of a fraud scheme. What the accountant is trying to do is to get the vendor to refund the money, and he or she will divert that refund for their own use. And I have a good example over here. Uh, we talk about near duplicates fraud. This is a reasonably long uh, case again. And we show how to run the tests in Excel or Access. Now we're going to compare the current period to the prior period. There are two chapters here. This one deals with mainly descriptive statistics. And we are looking for clues that something has changed. And that's something that has changed could be due to fraud or error. This is one of the completely new uh, chapters. We introduced something called 
the vector variation score, and indeed, uh, we talk about how how to measure something, uh, how to measure the change in a whole set of transactions, and this could be a tax return from one year to the next, it could be a trial balance from one year to the next, it could be a set of financial statements from one year to the next. How do we measure the change? And we come up with some some reasonably clever ways of doing this. Uh, these are This is Joe Biden's tax returns from when he was vice president to when he was no longer vice president and his income jumped uh, rather remarkably. And I just used Joe Biden's tax returns because I thought they would be interesting. I never knew that he would be a public figure right here in 2020. Time series data. And so what we are doing here is we are looking at the past pattern, we are projecting forward, and we are trying to see whether the actual results uh, are similar to those projections. And again, if they are wildly different, it means that something has changed. And with time series data, in this case, Minitab is introduced. Scoring forensic units for fraud risk. What we are doing here is we have predictors. Those predictors have weights and we end up with a final score. And that is our risk, a fraud risk score. This is similar to um, an, an, a professor. We have predictors, quizzes, tests, cases, presentations, and the like. Those uh, predictors have weights, and we end up with a final score for each student, um, which is their course grade at the end of the semester. Employers use those course grades to predict where the students would be highly productive members of their staff. This is the first of two case studies. And what we look at over here is the, uh, these were fraudulent tax refunds. Uh, this is an interesting case. And the especially nice thing about this case is that the fraud data is all here. And uh, we have the actual numbers. We can look at the numbers. We can run analytics on the numbers. And I have two case studies uh, that deal with exactly the fraud numbers from this case. The next one is another case, fraudulent shipping claims. Um, and the nice thing here is that we talk about the um, how the system worked. And again, right at the end, we talk about we have conclusions. And those conclusions relate to which controls were deficient and which types of tests might have detected this fraud before it reached 20.5 million. Financial statement fraud. I wish I could tell you that I had a formula here and you could simply run that formula and see and assess whether a set of financial statements are fraudulent or not. We can't do that. We have an M score which came close to that. This is not my M score. But what I do have here is I talk about financial statement fraud and I talk about the various sort of analytics type lessons that we could have learned from the big cases of a few years ago. R, it's new. We have a whole half chapter all about R, a half chapter all about access. And the reason that these two chapters are here is because Excel actually has a limit on the number of transactions that it will process. Whereas we have a, a limit with access, it's high, but there's a limit. And we have no limit with R, it's almost like a road without speed limits. The final chapter has some interesting uh, cases as well. And we talk about how to prevent and detect fraud. And uh, we also talk about fraud detection methods and, and what's happening in the book is the book is indeed all geared about detecting, but not only fraud, fraud, errors, biases, and other types of anomalies. Now, Supporting all that is my YouTube channel. I have lots of videos and the videos are still being produced. Uh, I think the videos are pretty good. I hope you agree. There are three playlists, uh, one for the idea cases, one for the normal chapter cases, and one that reviews each chapter. So you can watch a 10 minute video and it'll tell you what the chapter is all about. I try to keep the uh, uh, these reviews under 15 minutes. I also have 
this is what it might look like chapter 1 13 minutes I also have a series of PowerPoint slides one for each chapter and again I try to keep it to maybe 16 slides per chapter um, and we talk about how the chapter progresses and the main points uh, and this would be very suitable for an in-class lecture um, I then have my end of chapter questions and cases this document is 100 pages long 30,000 words and we have a section for each chapter we have idea based cases at the end and we have a concluding case at the end there as well I start off with a note for students and then each chapter has a series of 10 multiple choice questions and then from one to three cases um, at least one and sometimes all the way up to three there's a group of cases called idea there are four of them and they basically run analytics tests on two different data sets and they use almost every single idea feature that is useful in exactly a forensic analytics set, uh, um, setting this is the concluding case read an article answer the questions the article is reasonably serious and, uh, and and requires some careful reading I have an instructors manual this is for instructors and this contains amongst other things the solutions to the multiple choice questions the solutions to the cases uh, we have a section for each chapter and then I also have sort of an overview here which case which uh, data sets are being used for which case how difficult they are um, these are not data sets these are other um, other things that need to be read or analyzed and, a, and over here I have the software that is required for the various cases so it's almost like a little buffet here you can choose difficulty the data the type of software related to which chapters it's all up to you and last but not least I have a Facebook page forensic analytics by Mark Negrini and I will be updating this uh, uh, reasonably regularly I sort of let it uh, go a little moldy a little stale over these past few years but I'm back and I'm ready to update and uh, and keep things moving uh, with uh, interesting updates and the like so that's a review of the book I think you will enjoy it I enjoyed writing it I hope that you enjoy reading it and that you get a lot of benefit from the contents and so that's all bye bye